Hello everyone, this is Brad Wistens, and this is maybe the most I've ever been excited about a video. And that's because this has been a long time in the making. EVE has always been a really difficult destination to return from because of the super high gravity and extra thick atmosphere. But about three years ago, Astrobond posted a video showing that single stage from the surface of EVE to EVE orbit was possible. This absolutely blew my mind. I hadn't even considered that this would be possible before, and it really opened up some possibilities for new missions. After seeing this, I wasn't the only one who wanted to take this and somehow turn it into a truly single stage mission to EVE. And there were a couple really impressive single stage to EVE orbit missions in the year after this, but none of them could avoid the problem that after reaching EVE orbit, you had absolutely no fuel left to go anywhere else. Two years ago, I figured out a solution to this challenge. I used a space plane to drag an asteroid to low EVE orbit, then landed, then used ISRU to refuel, and then went back to orbit and then used ISRU to refuel off of the asteroid. This is technically a solution to the challenge as the asteroid is part of the environment, but really it's the lateral thinking solution that bypasses the true engineering challenge here. In essence, the asteroid is functioning as a staged fuel tank that I can leave in orbit. Over the last year, I've steadily been improving a space plane that was just designed to bring as much cargo as possible from EVE surface to low EVE orbit. Each iteration, the amount of payload I was able to get to orbit improved, and it finally reached the point where I realized that if I were to enlist the help of some ion engines, I could do a little more than just bring some payload to orbit. So, in this mission, I will take the single stage space plane, fly it from Kerbin to the surface of EVE, use ISRU on the surface of EVE to refuel, and then fly it all the way back home to Kerbin without any staging. To this end, I've put together three kilotons and 160 meters of vector powered space plane. Since this is optimized for EVE, it has less wings than you'd normally find on a Kerbin space plane, so it struggles off the runway a bit, but once we pick up speed, the very low drag and extra high thrust to weight ratio from the vector engines make the rest of the ascent a breeze. And in general, the way from Kerbin to EVE is going to be a lot easier than the trip back, so I'm going to move pretty quickly in this video through the trip out to EVE. The first big challenge of this mission will be landing it safely on EVE. During the initial iterations of this design, it was supposed to just be a cargo space plane that would haul cargo from EVE surface to low EVE orbit, and I was hoping that I'd be able to refuel it in orbit and then land it with the tanks full. This never quite worked because it's just about impossible to actually slow down safely when it weighs 3 kilotons, but luckily in this mission we're landing it when it's almost entirely empty on fuel, and because the engine's mounted at the front, it's very stable, both when full on fuel and when empty. Anyone who's dabbled in SSTOs has probably realized the struggle of wanting to put all the engines at the back. This is very convenient for packaging and aerodynamic reasons, but results in the center of mass moving backwards as fuel drains, which is the exact opposite of what you want. By putting about half of the engines, including the ion engines and fuel tanks at the front, the center of mass of this won't move barely at all as field drains, and as a result it's going to be stable and maneuverable throughout the mission. As with previous EVE missions, I'm going to land on the mountaintop at 148 west and 25 south. This offers an elevation of about 7,500 meters. This will allow us to avoid the worst of the atmosphere, and our engines will also have more ISP and higher thrust during takeoff. As a result, we'll increase the total amount of delta V available to us from the fuel, and will decrease the amount of delta V lost to drag and gravity during the ascent. My original plan was to use the vector engines to assist in maneuvering during this landing, but due to the careful weight balancing, it was surprisingly maneuverable, so I'm going to try to go for a pure gliding landing. After touching down, we're going to use some of the remaining liquid fuel to make it the rest of the way up the slope and just to the crest at the top of the mountain. On the surface, we're going to plant a flag to prove we're here and to prove that I actually remembered to test the ladder to get back into the cockpit this time. With that taken care of, Bill just has to get back in the cockpit and just wait a New York minute or two for the ISRU module to fill the fuel tanks. I had to take a lot of factors into consideration when picking the exact landing spot. 
First reason for this spot is that the crest of the hill allows the brakes to actually keep the craft from rolling, which isn't true if it's on even a mild grade. I discovered during testing that the exact takeoff path was really important. I'd assumed that I wanted to take off on a mild uphill, so the craft would already be orientated where I wanted it to be to climb. But what I discovered was is that it was really far superior to take off on a mild downhill, where I could use gravity to my advantage and even roll in without any power on for a little bit, just to save a little bit of delta V. I should note before takeoff that the engine gimbal is going to be extremely important even when still on the surface of EVE. At speed, during takeoff, if we hit even a minor inflection point upward in the surface, it's going to break the front landing gear. Well, it would break the front landing gear, except we have 16 vector engines at the front, which have an insane gimbal range. If we have the gimbals on it pointed downward, it'll actually help lift the front up and over these bumps and greatly reduces the amount of stress on it and keeps them alive. It also helps that we have dueled up pairs of extra large landing gear on all three points of this tricycle undercarriage. Once in the air, I want to get the nose up as quickly as possible. Once we're flying properly, I'm going to steadily pull it up to 25 degrees, and then it'll stay more or less around there and slowly climb to 30 degrees during the first stage of the ascent. Around 15 kilometers, I'm going to turn on the ion engines. This doesn't contribute too much to the ascent, but since we're getting electricity out of the alternators on the vector engines, it also doesn't really cost us anything. It might seem crazy to climb at this low of an angle on EVE with its super thick atmosphere, but due to the aerodynamic optimizations on this craft, it isn't really losing that much delta V due to drag, and the delta V loss to gravity at a steeper ascent would be far worse. You may notice that I've left the heat gauges up. You'll see this come into play later. In the upper stage of the ascent, I'm going to be riding the curve as shallow as possible and throttling back at some points to prevent the front of this from overheating. The majority of time I invested in this mission was just making minor changes to the ascent profile and the ratio of wing to the rest of the craft and the ratio of fuel tank to engine. And making tiny differences sometimes had a surprisingly large impact on the overall performance I was getting. Once our vertical speed reaches 500 meters per second, we have enough elevation to get us the rest of the way to orbit. So we're going to put the nose down to prograde and just accelerate as fast as possible. And by as fast as possible, I mean as fast as possible until heat starts to be an issue, at which point we're going to throttle back and try to keep the fairing from being too hot for too long, which will lead it to explode. Due to the low drag of this craft, as a general rule, Delta V lost due to gravity is generally more of a problem than Delta V lost to drag, so I tried to get this ascent profile as shallow as possible. As we near space, we're coming upon a beautiful eve sunrise. This is not an accident or something that I arranged just for it to look cool. This is actually an important part of the ascent because once we're out of the atmosphere, I'm going to deploy the solar panels at the front so the ion engines can help out and getting us the rest of the way to orbit. While the ion engines provide very little TWR and as a result very little delta V to this ascent, we can see that we only had about 3 meters per second of liquid fuel and oxidizer left after reaching a full orbit, so it was actually critical to allowing us to get here. Now that we've reached stable low EVE orbit, let's take stock of what we have left. As mentioned before, we only have 3 meters per second of liquid fuel left, but we also have 2,324 meters per second of ion fuel. We only need about 1,400 meters per second to return home to Kerbin, but our TWR is absolutely horrible right now, so as a result, I wanted to have at least 1,600 meters per second, but that still leaves us with plenty of delta V left. We could maybe even try to go land on Gilly, but I'm not going to because this ejection home is going to take literally hours of burning because of how low our TWR is, and landing on Gilly isn't really part of the mission. It would make it technically not non-stop, so for now we're just going to fly it home to Kerbin. To get to elliptical EVE orbit, I split the maneuver into 6 meters per second mini burns. These took 2 minutes of game time, and even with the help of better time warp, this ended up being an extremely, extremely long maneuver. Uh, I'll let you do the math on how long you think it took me to do this. Halfway into this maneuver, 
Eve had progressed enough in its orbit around Kerbal that our periapsis was no longer on the sunlit side, so I actually had to wait half of an Eve year for Eve to get all the way back over to the other side. The final ejection burn from a highly elliptical Eve orbit into a Hohmann transfer to Kerbin normally would have only taken me about 84 meters per second, but due to the atrocious TWR, it ended up taking me more than twice that. Because this burn is so long, large parts of it are nowhere near the periapsis, and as a result, we're going a lot slower. Due to the Oberth effect, this saps out a lot of the effect of the change in velocity that we're imparting. It also doesn't help that I can't even burn at all right at the periapsis, because we're actually shaded by the planet on that side, and we need solar power to power the ion engines. And those who are familiar with returning from Eve to Kerbin may notice that we didn't even complete the burn properly. This is just going to inject us into some orbits of Kerbal, whereupon we're then going to do a slingshot off of Eve. We need to do this because the first slingshot is actually going to be sending us in the wrong direction to return to Kerbin. And then we have a second approach where we will be slingshotting into the correct direction to head home to Kerbin. Now I should note, you can't do a gravity assist off of the planet that you're ejecting from that's really going to help you that much in terms of getting somewhere. We're not going to get any delta V savings here. The only reason I'm doing this is because the burn necessary to eject from Eve to Kerbin is just too long to do it all at once. So this is just a complicated way of splitting our burn in half to make it a little bit more efficient. This burn is going to be pretty similar to the first one. We got most of the work done in the first one, so this is a bit smaller. Uh, I should note that the angles I've picked to actually burn at are not actually the most optimal if we just wanted to totally minimize the delta V here. I also had to consider that if my angle during the burn was wrong, the solar panels wouldn't be getting the full impact of the sun, and we needed a pretty good amount of electrical charge to actually get this burn done in time. While I normally aim for super accurate maneuvers that entirely eliminate the need for any substantial amount of correction, we also needed a substantial correction burn here because it was pretty much impossible to get this to my normal level of accuracy. All taken into consideration, this maneuver that should have taken me about 80 meters per second took me about 250 meters per second. I probably could do this more efficiently if I tried it a couple times, but Doing it once took a really long time, and there's just no way I'm doing it again. I have 762 meters per second of xenon field remaining, which is great in terms of an indication of what's possible with a single stage from EVE plane, but in this case not really that usable because my ion engines are only capable of imparting about 1 20th of a meter per second squared, and that's when it's facing directly at the sun and you can actually use all the solar panels, which isn't generally the case. Generally landing massive space planes at Kerbin is a bit of a challenge, but I'd already put all the work into optimizing this craft to be maneuverable and safe when landing on EVE, and landing on Kerbin was more or less an easy version of that. Due to this craft's extremely high heat resistance and the fact that we're just about entirely empty on fuel now, capturing at Kerbin was extremely easy, which was a, a nice respite after the long ejection burn from EVE. As is tradition, I flew at a very safe elevation above the mountains on the approach to the Kerbal Space Center. And because I had done this at a very safe speed, I then had to make some very extreme maneuvers in order to actually slow down enough to land on the runway. As I come in for the final approach, I want to thank Astrobond, Kurgarin Aerospace, Stratson Blitz, and everyone else who's contributed to developing single stage from EVE designs. I'll include some of the videos that I found the most helpful as links in the video description. When empty on fuel and in the lesser gravity of Kerbin, this thing can be set down on the runway basically as fast as you want, but if you touch down at more than what I did here, you'd go flying off the end of the runway. So uh, I really think the Kerbal Space Center needs to invest in a longer runway. Uh, maybe, we can, uh, maybe we can make that happen. So to recap this mission, Bill has flown this reasonably sized space plane from the Kerbal Space Center to the surface of EVE and back. He did all of this without any staging and without any ISRU other than on the surface of EVE and also no asteroid shenanigans this time. 
Thank you everyone very much for watching. I really hope you guys have questions about this. Please feel free to ask and stay tuned for a cargo-oriented variant of this space plane.